Oh, this is a powerful scripture from God's holy word this yes. morning. Oh, hello. Glory to God. I know this is not a normal thing you would think about this time of year, but how important it is because church, there's things that we got to, oh, hallelujah. You know, Paul, uh, you, you know, in legal terms, they, they call it restitution. That means that a person is found guilty and, and they must pay back or, or to give or to, to, to give account for what they've done and they must uh, uh, take something from themselves and make things right. And, and, and here in the scripture, it's talking about a time when, when, when the children of Israel uh, were, 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 were during after the uh, a time that, that they went through the 40 years in the wilderness and they crossed over Jordan and now uh, uh, what caused the 40 years of wilderness is because uh, there were 12 spies sent out and, and, and only two of the 12 said to, to go on God said we would take it even though it was a land of giants uh, God said that we would rule the day there but they, the, but they were fearful and, and they did not heed what God told them and they disobeyed God, so they had to stay 40 years outside of the promised land. Now they have finally that generation that disobeyed God is now except for Joshua and Caleb and that was the two spies that, that, that God told them we could take on this land of giants and slay them and they were the only ones of this generation which survived this time and, and, and now it's their turn to lead uh, the, this tribe of Israel into the promised land and now they've already run into a problem. Yeah. He's going to test you. Yes. God said you can take it. There's a big bad wolf across the road. What'd you do? Well, you've you, you done the same thing you done 40 years ago. You, you, you disobeyed God. He told you what to do and you didn't do it. Now you have the same thing happen right now. See, up to this time, Joshua, even though they crossed in the promised land, God had, had allowed them to conquer all their enemies. Yeah. But the thing that prevented the generation of Joshua from being able to live to see the inhabitation of the promised land, well, guess what? When you disobey God, you've allowed the seal of the Father to be passed to the son, the daughter. God told them not to pick up anything that was of this nation. What did they do? They grabbed it, took it with them, and God said it's unholy, it wasn't clean. He's not going to allow sin. He's not going to allow filth. He's not going to allow junk okay, to get in there. You can't live righteous and expect. If you live righteous, God is going to bless you. But when you live unrighteous, don't expect to be blessed. You can put on the nicest clothes, drive the prettiest car, have the, 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 the nicest house on the block, have all this money. But I'm going to tell you, if God is not in it with you, if you're not doing everything He says to do, you're going to be a reproach, a, a, a curse. Because you're not going to have, you're not going to be healthy. You're not going to have uh, uh, blessings. Uh, you, you don't understand why these things are happening. These other things are not because you're disobeying God, and that's what happened. Now Joshua didn't know what was going on here. Uh, he thought he was following God. We're not blaming Joshua for, what, but there's things that we may not be aware of that's going on uh, inside of not necessarily you, but things that, that may be in your home, maybe in your family, maybe in the workplace. Uh, it, 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 may, it may be on the land somewhere. And what God said, I'm not going to bless you until you take care of this problem. Yes, amen. That's right. We're going to have to face our problems in this life. God is not going to bless us until we face our problems. If you ignore it, you see what happened to the tribe of Israel. They got beat. I'm not talking about that on the scoreboard. I'm talking about with swords. I'm talking about with spears. I'm talking about with arrows. A lot of folks got killed. Yes, God is going to get your attention one way or another. Yes, he is. Now here's 
Joshua the not only is he the general, the leader who took over after Moses to lead the children of Israel, Joshua was a priest. He served three major roles as the leader of Israel. Priest, general, and leader. So when Joshua went, and God told us, Lord, what are you trying to do? You promised us you'd bring, you delivered us from the promised land. You, you let us run around for 40 years out there in the wilderness. And then we cross over uh, the Jordan River and, and, and we start winning. And all of a sudden, you, you let us get killed. You're going, to, you're going to let the enemy wipe us off the face of the earth. And what's going on? Yeah. As we say in slain, what gives? You know, we think we're doing right. That we're serving God. We're, 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 we're doing everything we're supposed to. But why does these things keep on happening? Because we're overlooking something. Yeah. Let me put it in the background. Be okay. He ain't going to worry about that. And then all of a sudden, well, I can't, I, I can't go any further because cars tore up. Some reason or another, I'm not getting paid as much and I can't pay my bills right. What's going on here? Come on. Church? I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just trying to state a fact here. We're in a situation today that the decisions that we make determine our present and determine our future. Yeah. And, there's a, and the decisions we make in the past will forever follow us everywhere we go yes, until we turn it over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Here's Joshua. He's exasperated. He, he, he don't understand what's going on. I mean, he, 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 he's, he's broken up about it. He's tore up. I mean, he, he's devastated. I mean, he's crying, he's pleading. Yeah. Poured out his heart to God. What did I do wrong? What, what? I, I, I followed all your laws, your precepts, you, 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 everything you know. Well, why, why, why ain't things working? Now, why are you punishing us for doing what you said to do? He prayed through. Church, we go through problems a lot of times not because God's not willing to, to allow us to, to, to solve the problem. He just wants you to go through the steps to get there. We can't halfway pray through something God gives us the answer. He wants us to pray completely through. Yes, amen. Because what's happened is, is when we're praying through, He, through the move of the Holy Ghost and through Christ Himself who's making intercessions for us, uh, although the, the more fervent we pray, the, the Lord is saying that they, he's, they're working it out. They're, 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 they're breaking this junk off. Uh, they're, they're breaking aside the things that is causing this. And now that they're determined, they have broke, there's a spirit of brokenness in us that we are humbled ourselves. We've let pride get out of the way. We've let uh, 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 our, whatever it is that, that is keeping us hung up, uh, whatever is keeping us distracted, uh, we have allowed that joke to be moved out of the way that I can stand, uh, I can crawl, I can sit before the foot of the cross and now uh, I've allowed the blood to be applied and I can be, I can be in receivership to answer and listen to Him. We got to get all of our pride and all of our uh, all of our worldly desires out of the way before He'll answer us. Oh. Lord already went to the cross once for us. What He wants us to do is pray through, or He won't have to go again. That atonement took care of everything. Yes. He wants us to go to the foot to be broken and be reminded of the cost it took for him yes. to save a wretched soul like me. So Joshua
crying out in verse 7 says, Alas, so Lord God, wherefore hast thou all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us unto the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? And he says there in verse 10, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou upon the face? He has humbled himself. You see, that is submission. When's the last time we have submitted ourselves? Joshua did, 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 took away his pride and he was on the foot of the ground. He was down here. His face was on this earth. He didn't care if he got dirty or not. He didn't care how, how, how his garment looked before he went down. He didn't care how it looked like when he got up. He was just concerned about serving God. He was wanting answers right now. He was playing the blood. He wanted to know why the, the transgression that took place. And, and what did God say? You have proved to me that you have submitted yourself before me now. I can give you the answers in which you seek out. When's the last time that we showed God completely that we're willing to serve Him? Yeah, come on. That's what He's looking for. When is the? How can we prove to God that we're truly submissive when we're down on our knees praying? When we pray until that prayer goes through, that no matter what my problems were before, I kneel before the, uh, the foot of the cross this morning. That I know that they don't were. They were wrong. But God's going to make it right. All we got to do is listen to Him and He'll show us what to do. Yeah. And He said, get up. I see that you have submitted yourself before me. It says, now you're worthy to receive what you, the answers you need to know. It says in verse 11, Israel, Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Preach it, brother. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. It got dirty, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about getting down on your knees and putting your face on the ground. I'm talking about they got into some sin. Yeah. It wasn't just sin, it was cursed. Cursed means, boy, you, 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 not only have you seen it, you got some stuff you, you had no business even looking at in the first place. Uh -huh. This is stuff that God has hated from the beginning. It's cursed. That means God has took His favor off of that. That He has put, oh, what did He say there? Before He uh, uh, called for the... Uh, called for the flood that the sin or, or, or it was so bad that it, 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 it got into his nostrils. It was so bad on there. So this accursed thing got it. Oh, this this was this is something that really got into his breathing. Now, if you want to have God have a breathing problem, you just keep on touching stuff he doesn't want you to have any business oh, doing. Yeah, come on. You get in sin so bad, you're gonna become just as the sin is. That's why he said you have taken this accursed thing. You put something that was impure into this camp that was once was sanctified. When oh glory, hallelujah. When when Israel was allowed to go across the Jordan this morning. When they crossed Jordan after that 40 years of wilderness, they had made a covenant with God. We will not worship any idol or any other thing. We're not going to do like the Egyptians did. We are your children. We are going to obey you. When we cross over here, we will worship you. We will praise you. We will put up burnt offerings and give them to you. We will not do the things that we did in times past. We are your people and you have guaranteed and we'll just follow your leading. Yeah, come on. But what happened? Not long after they started uh, this campaign to conquer the promised land, uh, some more, somehow, uh, they got a little distracted. And not only did they get distracted, something very bad was to happen there that not only did they get distracted, but it was a curse thing. They knew what was good. They knew what was evil. But somehow they, they thought this curse thing was worth keeping. I don't know what was wrong with them, their heart, their mind. Now we read 
what happened. They got some things that God told them to not only destroy these people, but everything they had in possession. Because think about this, church. When we commit sin, that means that we transfer sin into things that we have. Things that is in our presence. You see, that sin is like a disease. Uh, like this morning, I know we had some people with a virus and, uh, and once it was running fever and we told them to stay home because they, we don't want that spread to other people. I'm telling you, church, when sin gets in something, it spreads like a disease. Yes. God is not going to allow the Holy Ghost come into a Vile vessel. It's got sin in it. We've got to be sanctified. Yes. We've got to be pure. In verse 13, it says, Up! Sanctify the people. He was on his knees and God was revealing to him what the problem was in the camp. He brought sin in and I'm not going to bless the people who sin. Stinks. So what's he saying? You need to wash yourself up. Get this stink out of here. Yeah. I can't bless something that's stinking. One of the things they speak about these days the that, that you hear about a lot about the uh, prophetic word movement. If it comes from the Bible and it's read, that's prophetic. It's already been done, or it shall be done. That's prophetic. But it also says that what we think, if we think negatively, it's going to be thinking, stinking. Yes. So if we think negatively, it's going to be produced negatively. Yes. So God, through the Lord, is saying, hey, you've got to clean yourself up if you want, yes. something, if you want a change to take place. Mm -hmm. We've got to want to change before change can actually be done. Yes. We can say it wants to be done, and, but until we go through that transformation, none of it will take place. And what God is telling them is, if you clean yourself up and be truly wanting to change, I will change you. So what he's saying, get up, sanctify the people. You want to know what leadership is? It's showing people how it's done. If we don't go before them and show them why, the reason for it is all of it's for nothing. Yeah. If they don't see the victory in our lives, wow. If we don't see the fruit of our tree bearing that wonderful flavor of, of, of blessings, why should we have to go through and do the same thing? I love ministers and I go through all sorts of problems, but it should never destroy our testimony. Amen. If we go through stuff, what has happened? He has covered us by the blood. We are overcomers by our time. Yes, we go through problems, but through the grace of God, we pray through. We listen to what He said. He said, sanctify ourselves in the Spirit of God. When we had put that mind in one accord like He did on the day of Pentecost, He will transform us. But we have to be ready to be changed and want to change before yes. it takes place. And then with the evidence of it takes place, that's what leadership is. You see the joy in the transformation of God in each people's lives. That's what God is telling Joshua. I know that you have, uh, have discovered what I'm, you prayed through. You wanted to know bad enough to, to put your face down on the ground. Uh, you, you prayed through and I'm giving you the answers right now. So I'm not telling you uh, that you have already, through my presence, uh, have been sanctified. And I'm telling you because uh, I have appointed you leader uh, over this people uh, that you uh, believe by sanctifying them. All it took was uh, for neighbors and their friends to get killed for them to change. Is it going to take your neighbor, your friend, maybe your own kid to change? 
I want to do better. God knows how to get our attention to change. Yes. He wanted that sin out of camp. If it caused people to get killed and get it out, he was willing to do it. See, the whole country, the whole tribe was wondering why all of a sudden they was winning every battle they went into, and all of a sudden they got whooped. Yeah. Not just a little bit whooped, they got creamed. Yes, they did. They were shook up. So when Joshua said, I pray to the Lord, and this is the orders in which the Lord has given me, he is hot. you can see what has been produced in me, and this has to told us what we need to do. He says to sanctify ourselves. In other words, we're going to have some prayer meeting. Yeah. Of course, I know you just can't go in the shower and wash up. That'd be good, but we're going to have a prayer meeting. We're going to pray through. Wow. That's when the power of the Holy Ghost starts to manifest when yeah. we have prayed through that we have committed ourselves to the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to pray through. Yes, we do. Sins removed. Sins removed. And we read a couple of scriptures later what they do. Everyone who's responsible for that has to be punished. There are things in this life that we know beyond the shadow of a doubt. If we ever cross that line, we can't go back. It says in the Bible, if we speak against the Holy Ghost, we'll be permanently doomed for eternity. Once we cross that line, we can't. It's one old term, we can't go back. Remember what the rich man said to Abraham Lord, let me warn my brothers. Their judgment. But what do you say? Abraham told there is a place that you cannot cross. There, 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 there's a gap, there, there, there's an expanse there that no one can cross. You're forever fixed. Church, we must be careful about everything. You see, they might have been sin in this camp, but it already corrupted that family. They had already crossed too far over. There was no way that they could come back, but they who was around them, if they wanted to be preserved, they was going to have to get rid of it all again. As I was telling the children in Sunday school, there's some decisions that only, not only happen to you, but they can be passed on to someone else. And unfortunately, the curse had already been passed down to the children of this family and all of them that we killed. Church, the decisions that we teach our children, our grandchildren, our family not only affects them and everybody else they do, as we know that the decisions we make as parents are going to affect everybody, the will of the planet, and everyone else that's in our custody. It says, sanctify the people. Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, there is a cursed thing in the midst of thee. Thou cannot stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. Mm -hmm. Help us, Jesus. You ever wonder why it seems like no matter what you do, you're always defeated? You can't get ahead?
while you're constantly having a struggle, you need to ask yourself, what have I done that's been used against me? Is there some sin in my life that I need to make restitution to the Lord about? Because God said to this people, you're not going to have any more victory until you remove this curse from you. This is a time of giving. This is a time of joy. But you know, in a few weeks, there's going to be another year that will dawn upon us. You know, you hear all the time about these resolutions for a new year. Well, I don't want to make a liar out of anybody, especially myself. But what I'm asking you to do, if there's some things that you don't understand in your life, why you can't seem to get through, that no matter what you do, it still lies right in front of you. Could we be in a Joshua moment? Is there sin in the hymn? Is there something that we need to make restitution for? Some things that we need to do before He'll let us go on. And you know, if we read this chapter here and even into the next chapter. The children of Israel took care of this problem. They were victorious. And as we read on, there were more problems that took place. But what happened? Every time they went to God, they listened to what God had to say. And when they did what He said, they overcame. So church, I'm asking you this morning, if you're running into the same problem all the time, you've had this problem for a number of years, or it just seems like it's, it's been, and you've tried everything you know to do, and still, whatever you do does not work, I want you to ask the Lord this morning, have I allowed curses to be upon my life, my family? Now you got to remember this, Joshua was not the problem. But, but the problem was surrounding Joshua and he still had to <coughs> deal with it. Yes. There are some things that we may be dealing with, not directly to us, but it affects us. And the reason why, you need to check out and do a self. Oh, Lord, you know, it says to make a self-evaluation of ourselves. Examine yourselves, the Scripture says, to see if you be found worthy. Father in heaven, Lord, if there's any reproach upon my life, if there's any type of a curse thing, Father, Lord, I pray. Lord, let me know about it. Lord, that I can get rid of it, Father. You sanctify us, Father. Lord, this church, any person here in their lives, Father, Lord, for things, Father, that Lord, we've been running from, we've been hiding from, Father. We've just been trying to overlook and thank, Lord, through our own pride and our own arrogance, Father, that, Lord, we can overcome it, Father, on our own ability, Father. Lord, forgive us right now. Lord, the, Lord I know that there's a time that we, you once blinked in ignorance, Father, but, Lord, I know that time has passed. Lord, if there's anything in us, Father, that's a curse, Father, Lord, I pray Lord, this congregation and this community, Lord, I pray that we'll pray through, Father, and make the changes through your divine grace and tender mercies to overcome it, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us have a sound mind, a sound body, but a pure heart. So, Father, in the name of Jesus,
Lord, I pray, Father, for every need that's in this community, this region, Father. Lord, we know that there's sin, Father, Lord. There's addictions coming out of every end, every portal, every depth of hell. Lord, I know they're looking for something, Father. They're looking for all these things for You, Father, but they're looking in the, in the cursed places, Father, the wretchedness, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that Your power, Your Spirit, Father, Lord, Your blood, Father, was applied, Father. Lord, be with us this day and all days, Father, Lord, and You tell us, Father, what to do, Father, and we be obedient to You. And follow through and do whatever it is that we need to do to take any curses off of our life. Lord, not for my sake, but for the betterment of the kingdom of God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that souls will be added to the kingdom of God, Father. Lord, that we take care of anything in us, Father, that may be a reproach or a curse, Father. Lord, I know that we may need to do things unaware, Father, that's causing problems, Father. Lord, let Draw our attention, Father, to what the problem is. And Father, I pray for your wisdom and guidance to show us how to correct these problems. Lord, for every need that's in this church, Father, and every need that's in this community, Father, Lord, I pray for your heavenly order. Lord, your leadership, your guidance, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, for each one here, Father. Lord, let the Word come alive in them like it's never been before. Yes, Lord. Lord, let this Word shake them, Father. Confound them. Lord, I pray they'll start asking questions about themselves, Father, that, Lord, if they'll come to You and pray about. Lord, they'll pray in their secret place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let Your glory be done in all things, Father. Oh, glory. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I just pray, Father, for anybody who's not accepted Christ, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, if they'll accept Him now, accept You now, Father. Lord, I pray for that comfort that comes with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Father, be with them. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus, we Church, you only get out of worship what you put in. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of us. He gave His everything for us. He gave His body, His spirit, His mind that we may be saved. We may never assemble together again in this life. It's so important that we put God first. If He put His Son before us, let's do our very best to give Him all that He would like us to do this morning. Praise God. Is there any need this morning? You got a need? Just come on. Come on, hold them, we'll pray with you.
If there's somebody that you need to pray for, we'll just pray for them right now. Lord knows what they need. Pray for lost family members if you don't have one to pull yourself. Pray for all your lost family. Jesus. Father in heaven. Thank you. 